it says that we're live. It says that the lesson is starting. So hello everyone. Welcome to this English lesson. We'll start in about 40 seconds. I'm excited to uh teach you some words and phrases about games. Um something that we do more of in the winter than in the summer but still uh fun fun fun. Let me just check to make sure everything's working and we'll start in 20 seconds. Oh, I'm bumping my microphone here. Looks good. Hi Naomi and Lolly Lolly and Wanda and Key Park and Vitor and Madi. Starting in six seconds. Hopefully this uh all works the way it's supposed to. We'll see. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about games. Games are things that we play in my part of the world. We play a lot more games though in the fall, the winter, and the spring than we do in the summer. We play a lot of outdoor games in the summer but this is a lesson about the games we play inside. The games you play while sitting around a table with friends or family. Maybe you play with cards. Maybe you play a board game. There are a variety of games that you can play. Kids play a lot of games. Most of the games that I played as a kid were very simple um but they had some of the same vocabulary as the games I play now as an adult. So, hopefully you like games or at least want to learn some English phrases and words that you can use when talking about games. So, welcome to this English lesson about games. I do wanna mention that there is a study pack for this lesson. There is a link in the description below or if you go to bobthecanadian.com, the study pack has all the original slides as a PowerPoint and it has a crossword puzzle handout, a matching handout, a matching with pictures handout, a vocabulary sheet. I think there's nine or ten handouts. Um so, bobthecanadian.com if you want to have a look at that. I want to say hi to a few people though. Hi to Wanda and Mode Eggs and Jesus and Doris and Carol and Patrick and Fluency and Maudie, John Wedge, Lolly Lolly, Freddie Wolf. I should say bonjour to Lolly Lolly and Freddie Wolf. Um Fadi, Sophia, Key Park, The Bras, uh Ada, Michelle, Foxy Caddy, John Wedge, Redfish, Alina, Xavier, Cola. Saying hi to a lot of people here. Vitor. I'm scrolling back to see who else is here. John Wedge. I think I'm starting to repeat names now but hello to all of you. This is our first live stream with no moderator. I'm still trying to think through how to do that. One thing I can tell you though is that if you uh let me see here if I can remember how to do this. I don't know if it's that the word question or not. I don't think that's what it is. Oh, I think it's a link. Yes, that's what it is. So, if you are a member and you type this in the chat without the quotation marks, the a link or the question form will pop up. So, if you see someone asking for that, uh maybe one of you can try it if you're a member. So, it's the exclamation mark and the word link. It will pop up. Um but yes, I miss Dave as well. I do miss Todd as well. Todd was here uh, up to uh, almost a year ago but I will figure out what we're going to do. I'm just waiting to see if someone does test it out. I think Mo just tested it. So, members have permission to pull up the link. So, if you see someone asking for it, you can do that. Uh hey, please have good English conversations in the chat. Let me do a little check here of the audio. Awesome. And I do want to mention a slight change for Friday lessons which I think you'll like. So, the lesson itself, I usually teach 30 to 40 words and phrases. I'm going to probably teach closer to 25 to 30 every week. So, a little smaller. Still a lot of words and phrases and I'm still going to go for a full hour. So, what we'll do is the lesson on the topic will last about 45 minutes and then I will stay for the last 15 minutes and it will be open question time where you can ask questions that aren't on topic. So, I'll let you know how that goes as we work our way through it. I think this would be a great time to get started. Let's do that. Board games. So, we refer to games that you play on a table um 
in two ways in English. They're either board games or card games. Board games are games where it comes in a box. You open the box and there is a game board. There are pieces. There might be dice. I'll talk about a lot of this stuff later. And there are rules and you play a game using the board. Card games are games played with cards. Um the cards we play with here, there are four suits. Um you do something called shuffling. I'll talk about that later. Uh and you sit with people and you follow the rules for whatever game you're playing. Maybe you're playing bridge. Maybe you're playing rummy. There are a variety of card games. With board games, maybe you're playing Monopoly. That's a popular game in my part of the world. Or maybe you're playing a game called Scrabble which is a word game. By the way, Scrabble's a great game to play if you're an English learner. So, board games, any game you play on a table um where you sit around a table with other people and enjoy playing a game that looks kinda like this and other variations. Card games, any games you play with cards. The people, just like a sport, the people who play a game are called players. Um and a common question you might hear is how many players? So, someone might say, hey, do you wanna play a new game? And you might say, how many players? And they'll say, oh, we can play with four or six um uh players. They'll say, oh, you can play with just two. But the people who play a game are called players. And of course, the verb you use is to play. You play a game with other people and those people are called players. And then again, the question, how many players? I have the little orange arrow here because on the box, I think it says four to six players. It also says ages six plus. So, you can be quite young to play that game. Every game has rules. Usually, when you open the box of a board game, you can find a piece of paper and it will say rules for playing Monopoly or rules for playing Scrabble. It's very important that you read and understand the rules if you're playing a new game. Um it's very important that all the players have read and understand the rules. Sometimes when you're playing a game, you need to explain the rules to people because they haven't played it before. This past week, I played a game at work. Teachers sometimes play games at work and the person I was playing with had to explain the rules to me. They had to tell me how the game worked, what I needed to know to score points and to win. So, it's always nice when you're learning a new game if you can read the rules or if someone can explain the rules to you. So, this is a very common site in my part of the world. It's called a card table. It's a table where the legs fold up. We have a card table in our back room and usually in the fall and winter when it's colder outside, we have the card table out. Not just to play cards. We also use it to do puzzles, to play board games and of course, to play cards. But it's a table where I'm not sure if you can see it. I'll zoom in a bit but the legs can fold up and it has some folding chairs as well although we usually use normal chairs. But a card table is a table where the legs fold up and you can store it somewhere and you can take it out and set it up when you want to play a card game or a board game. So, a deck of cards. So, this is a deck of cards. I believe a deck of cards has 52 cards in it. It has four suits. It has clubs and spades and diamonds and hearts. At least the cards I play with. Um and it is usually something where you buy it in a pack and when you take it out, you call it a deck. There's also something called the joker. If you add the joker, there's 54 cards. I think there's two jokers. We don't usually play with the jokers though. Um if you don't know what the jokers are, I think that was the card that was on the thumbnail of this lesson. So, this is a deck of cards and this is to shuffle. There are two ways to shuffle. So, you can also here I have a deck of cards right here. This is how Bob shuffles, okay? Bob shuffles like this. Bob doesn't shuffle like like that. That's too that's too hard for me. The way like you have to ha- split the in half and then you gotta do this and then the cards go flying everywhere. So, there are two ways to shuffle. One is like this and you do this to mix up the cards. 
you want the cards to randomly come off the deck. So, you don't want them to be in order. You want to shuffle them to mix them up. Um I wish I could shuffle like that. I know a lot of people can shuffle like that. I have friends who can shuffle like that but I can't. By the way, it's a fun word, shuffle. Um and it means to mix up the cards. Once you have shuffled the cards, you need to deal the cards. Oh, by the way, that's the joker but in this deck, the joker is a horse for some reason. So, I guess I shuffled the jokers in. Anyways, when you deal the cards, it means you give the cards to the people who are playing. Generally, you give people one card at a time. So, if we were playing a game, we would take turns being the dealer. I'll talk about take turns in a bit. Um and we would then deal the cards to people. So, I would shuffle. I don't wanna drop the cards and then I would deal. So, if everyone needed seven cards, I would then deal and give every person seven cards. One at a time. You don't give a person seven cards right away. You do one person at a time until every person has seven. And then a very common question when playing a card game is whose deal is it? Generally, when you are playing a card game, each person deals. So, you deal, you play a round. When that round ends, the next person deals. It's usually not the case that one person deals all the time. Unless you're like gambling at a casino, then they'll have a dealer. I don't really know what that's like but uh generally when you're playing a game, this is a very common question. Whose deal is it? Because sometimes you forget who the last person was that dealt the cards. Hey, let's do some questions. I know there's gonna be lots of fun questions today. Let's get to the first question from Ruslan. Hello, dear teacher Bob. How are you, sir? What is your favorite outdoor game and computer game? Have a nice weekend and a cool track of the weekend. Oh, listen to a cool track of the weekend. I should do that. Um my favorite indoor game, we've been playing Settlers of Catan and there's another game called Seven Wonders. Um they're a little bit different than your normal games like uh checkers and chess. Um I do like checkers by the way. Um but yes, my favorite outdoor game would probably be I like playing outdoor volleyball a little bit. That's kind of fun. Um but I can't really think of another one. We have a game called cornhole where you throw bean bags and try to get them into a hole in a box. That's a fun game as well. Good question though. Um Vitor, in a card game when you are bluffing, what kind of signals do you make to your partner? I usually wink. <laughs> so, um generally in a card game, what's called table talk is discouraged. That's saying anything or doing something so that the person who's on your team knows what's in your hand. So, I don't usually do anything but maybe there's something I do. I don't know. Maybe I touch my nose. Hard to see. Hard to say. From Renata. Hi, Bob. I'm not a big fan of games but in high school, I played Uno a lot with my classmates. Do you used to play it when you were younger? Dave will be missed. Peace. We still play Uno. Um Uno is a very fun card game. It's a different deck though. Uno is not played with this kind of deck. It's played with an Uno deck. Um and has colors and numbers and cards that make other people pick up cards. It's a fun game. So, uh we still play it now with our kids. We actually play a lot of games on New Year's Eve. That's a very popular evening for us to play games. Uh let's see here. From Kurdish. Bob, do you have any games that you find incredibly engaging and can't resist playing for extended periods? Jen not Jane. Jen has been feeling a bit neglected and miss your company. No, I generally play computer games in the winter when we're more relaxed and we do play more games together in the winter. So, Jen doesn't feel too uh too neglected but yes, sometimes in the winter, we'll play one game quite a bit. From Ario, hi, interesting topic about games. I used to play PS2 as a kid. I've played so many different PS2 games. How about you? I just focus on chatting in English now. Well, I've played a lot of Nintendo like Mario Kart and Smash Bros. Those are the two games I have played the most of on a computer. From Bay, what's your favorite video game? Back then when you were a kid and now you are an adult, have things changed? I love playing board games with my family. 
Favorite video game is still Age of Empires. Age of Empires 2. Um favorite board game? I really like Monopoly and I really like Scrabble. Those are two. Those are classic board games. I like both both of them. Uh let's see here. From New Words with MP. Is a Ouija board game really horror or it's fake? I haven't really played with one. I've only really seen it in movies. A Ouija board is where everyone moves their hands on a a board on a game token on a board. So, I don't know enough about it. I would say it's just fake. That would be my guess. Let's see here. From do do do. Hey, Bob. Question one. Have you ever bought a video game just for its story? No. Question two. Have you ever spent any time watching esports? A little bit. I've watched League of Legends and Counter-Strike go a little bit up. Mostly because my kids watch it. From Lolly Lolly. Bonjour, Bob. Have you ever played poker? Have a good day. So, poker is a card game where you wager money. You bet on having the best hand to try and win the money. Uh, I have played a little bit when I was in university. Uh, my friends and I would play poker sometimes but we would play only with um nickels and dimes and quarters. So, we never played with like ten dollar bills. We played with pennies and nickels and dimes and quarters. So, we played f- mostly for fun. Um but I'm not really a gambler lolly lolly. I don't uh I'm not someone who uh I don't go to the casino or play uh poker regularly. So, Hung says, hi, Bob. I like to play football and badminton. So, which games did you play when you were young and now? I think you should play chess. It's good for senior citizens. Thanks. So, when I was young, I played a lot of really simple card games. There's a card game called Memory where you put all the cards face down and then you flip two and try to get to that match. I played a lot of that and I played a game called Go Fish. It's a card game as well. Now, I prefer to play a card game called Euchre. It's a little hard to uh let's see here. I can put it in the uh it's a fun game. I do really enjoy it. Euchre. It's you need four people to play and it's played with a smaller deck. Sophia says, what is your favorite board game? It depends who I'm playing with. Um when I'm playing with my family, we have a variety of board games um but I do like playing I mentioned Seven Wonders. It's a newer game and Settlers of Catan which is I think a pretty popular game around the world. So, I don't really have a favorite but those are two that I do really enjoy playing. Jesus says, have you ever cheated playing cards? Bob the Canadian never cheats. Cheating's not good. Why would I do that? I, I am I turning red? I've never cheated playing cards. That 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 would be that would be mean. By the way, I'll talk about cheating later in the lesson. And then last question and then we'll get back to the lesson from William. Uh hello teacher Bob. I want to ask you what motivated you to become an English teacher? So, a better question is what motivated you to become a teacher? So, I have always liked learning about things and then explaining them to other people. So, this ties into games because when I was younger, I would learn how to play new games and then I would teach my brothers and sisters and cousins how to play them. So, on the farm, we would play hide and seek and then I would learn new versions of the game like kick the can is a form of hide and seek or sardines is a form of hide and seek and I would teach them how to play that. So, I've always liked learning things and then teaching them. I've also always liked technology and I loved learning French. I love the process of learning a language. So, What motivated me to become an English teacher? I like explaining things. I like learning things. I like technology and I like I just like languages. So, it seemed like a good fit for me to teach some English. Let's see. From Zach. Hey, dear Bob. What games did you play when you were bored? Not boring. Bored. Such as PUBG. Maybe we can together to win a chicken. I have not played Fortnite or PUBG or any of those newer games. Um I think I got a little too old for those games. So, not not gonna be jumping online anytime soon to play them. From Winter Wright. Hi, teacher Bob. Thanks for your lesson. It is the first time I see the word shuffle. Ah, yes. Are there any verbs or adjectives about playing mahjong? Have a nice day. Just the word tile. 
So, you would have instead of cards, you would have tiles. I think that counts as a game piece, a tile. So, a card, this is a card, right? It's thin and made out of paper. I don't have a tile here but a tile is thicker and it's made out of plastic or maybe even metal or something like that. So, uh that would be the difference. And then there's probably specific vocabulary but I won't go into that right now. Nathan, what is your favorite card game? At this point, I I really like Euchre. That's a fun game. If I'm playing with kids though, I do like to play fish. Okay, let me get a sip of water here. Okay, what do we got? Nightbot's working good. My plan before getting instead of getting a different moderator, I might set it up so that members can alert me if someone is misbehaving in the chat and then I'll pause the lesson and take care of it. I haven't figured that out yet but at some point, I will do that. Thanks, Mode and Key Park for popping that link up. That's very handy. I think that's a good start. I don't think I'm gonna be able to find another moderator. So, we might have to figure out how to do this ourselves going forward. Okay, back to the lesson. Your hand, when you're playing a card game, if I'm playing a card game and if I was dealt uh seven cards, this would be my hand. So, this person's hand, depending on what game they're playing, might be a good hand or a bad hand. But you take the cards you've been dealt and you kind of fan them out a little bit like this. And then this is your hand. I usually hold mine. I kind of bend the cards a little bit and I hold my cards close because I don't want people like it's bad if you put your cards like this because then people can see your hand. So, I usually hold my cards fairly close. So, that is your hand. And to stack the deck. So, this is a hard one to explain. But if I was dealing the cards, if someone said, whose deal is it? And I said, oh, it's my deal. And if I did something like this, if I, let's say there's four people playing and if I put, let's say twos were good and then I made every fourth card a two and then I deal and then I get all the twos, I would have stacked the deck. So, stacking the deck is cheating. You shouldn't stack the deck. Um, but if you do stack the deck, it means that you make it look like you're shuffling but you arrange the cards secretly so that when you deal, you or your partner gets really good cards. So, we also have an English phrase, the deck was stacked against me. You know, I applied for the job and I didn't get it. The deck was stacked against me because the man hired his own son. So, in life, when something doesn't go your way, you can say the deck was stacked against you. So, you can use a game term in real life as well. So, let's talk a little bit about turns. So, when you play a game, you need to take turns. You need to know whose turn it is. In fact, we often say whose turn is it when you're playing a game. So, let's say you're playing with three people. The rules of the game will probably say the person to the left of the person who deals the cards goes first and after that, it's the next person's turn. So, when you take turns, it means each person has a certain amount of time to do what they want to do in the game. The other people who are playing can't do anything during that time. They just kind of sit and wait or watch what the person is doing if it's that person's turn. So, generally, a game works where during your turn, maybe if it's a card game, you pick up a card and you maybe put a card down depending on the rules but you would do that during your turn. And then again, a very common question is whose turn is it? Sometimes when you're playing a game, you're also talking. Like games are meant to be fun social activities. So, you might talk and laugh and then at some point, someone might say, okay, um whose turn is it? Um because you've had so much fun talking about something else that you've forgotten whose turn it is. So, when you play a game, you take turns. And a very common question during a game would be whose turn is it? At least if you're playing with me, that's a common question. I'm often saying whose turn is it? So, die or dice. We don't use the word die very often anymore. So, this is a pair of dice. I don't know if it'll focus. It'll focus by my face. I'll put them over here. 
This is a pair of dice. Um if you have just one, it's called a die but generally, a game requires two or more dice. So, you usually just say dice. Um they make a nice little sound um and you can see that they have numbers represented by dots. Let's see if we can get it to focus. If I hide my face, yeah. Numbers represented by dots from one to six. So, a lot of board games will come with dice. A lot of board games require dice so that you can play them and again, it you might just have one dice. You should say die but we ought, we don't usually say die um or two dice or three dice or five dice. There are some games that require a lot of dice and what do you do with them? Well, it's used to randomly generate a number and then if I roll the dice, these are a little bit different than mine. If I ro- let's pretend my hand is a table. If I roll the dice, then a number will come up. This is the number. Oh, it was a six. Now, it, it rolled over. So, I should have brought a little table here. Do you think I can roll the dice onto my phone? We'll see if we can. So, you can roll the dice. Ah, oh, there we go and the number that came up is a seven. Do you wanna play a guessing game? In the chat, guess what number I'm going to roll in a moment. I'll talk for a little bit about dice but put a number in the chat and then I will roll the dice and we will see <laughs> we'll see who is right. So, most games when you open the game box will have dice if it requires dice and you will roll the dice if it's your turn. So, I'm just waiting for the chat here to light up with numbers. I see Lolly Lolly says four. Every, oh, people are guessing four. You know, you need to get double twos to get a four, eh? So, I'm gonna roll both dice. So, maybe <laughs> we'll see. Um also, these are the things that get lost very easily because sometimes they roll off the table. Um okay. So, here we go. We're we're gonna roll. I don't know if all of the uh all the numbers are in. Hopefully, the dice don't fall off my phone. It is an eight. Oh, it's a seven. Can everyone see that? Luck, lucky sevens. Should I roll again? We'll roll one more time. You don't win anything. It's a nine. So, if you guessed seven or nine, yay. There's no prize. We'll just say yay. So, good job. Anyways, you roll the dice and again, you have dice to randomly generate a number and then you do something in the game with that number depending on the rules. Maybe you get a six and you move your game piece six times on the game board um but that is what you would use dice for. That's a lot of people chatting. We should uh, we should roll dice more often. When you play a game, you usually need to keep score. You might do this on a piece of paper. Um there might be a little device that comes with the game with sliders that help you keep score. You know, it might have the numbers one through ten on a piece of plastic and a little thing you can move. Um but generally, you need to keep score to dis- to figure out who wins and who loses. So, this game is called Yahtzee. When you roll the dice, you get a certain number of points and someone will write that down. A common question in a game is who wants to keep score? Usually, one person will keep score during the game. So, they'll get a pencil and a piece of paper and it might be like this where it comes with the game or you might just get a a piece of paper and write everyone's names and then at the end of every round, when a round is over, you'll record everyone's score before you play the next round. And it depends on the game but you need to keep score. Again, a common question before you start playing a game would be who wants to keep score? If you're playing a board game, it probably comes with a game piece or token or game pieces or tokens. Here's a wide variety of game pieces from different games. There's some chess pieces. There's some checker pieces. There's dominoes up there at the top. That's a domino. There's a mahjong tile. There's a scrabble piece at the far end where you see the letter S. Um if you've ever played boggle, I think those dice with letters are from the game boggle but many games have special pieces that you use in order to play the game. So, you would call them game pieces or game tokens. It depends on how it's used in the game but don't lose the pieces. It's hard to play a game. Um we have a few games where instead of the 
regular piece. There's just a Lego piece in the box now because Lego pieces make good replacements for lost game pieces. So, we often will do that. And then two things. When you take turns playing a game, you might go clockwise or you might go counterclockwise or anticlockwise. In Canada, we say counterclockwise and I think you get the point. If you take a clock and if you were to lay it on the table, if you take turns going in this direction, you are going clockwise. If you take turns going in the other direction, you are going counterclockwise. Most of the time, uh we play games, we go clockwise when we play a game. If I was to deal the cards, the person on my left would go first and we would take turns in that direction. So, we would go clockwise and not counterclockwise. I'm not sure where they say anticlockwise but on the internet, it seemed more common than counterclockwise. Hey, we're gonna jump to questions and we're gonna go to members only chat. Give me a second to set that up. I do wanna say hi to all of the people who are watching. I do want to mention once again that this lesson has a study pack. There's a link in the description below or you can go to bobthecanadian.com. Um you can use that for self-study or if you're an English teacher, you could make handouts for your class. There's a crossword puzzle, matching worksheet, vocabulary list, all of the slides from this lesson, everything you need to use this in a classroom. But let's go to members only chat. Members, thank you for being members. If you have a question right now, you can ask it directly in the chat and I will also keep answering questions from the form. There's a few over there. So, let's do that. From RC, hi, Bob. Why is the word football used in America? After all, in this game, almost no one is allowed to touch the ball with their feet. Does it make sense? No, it does not make sense. I don't know how to describe it but yes, American style football and in Canada, we play the same sport. It's modified slightly um but uh yeah, mostly people throw and catch and run with the ball. They do occasionally kick it but uh yes, I don't know or see why we use that. Let's see here from Fred from France. Hey, Bob, are you a good cheater? No. And are you a good loser? Yes. And do you quit the game when you think you can't win anymore? No. Have you ever played tarot? I love this game. I have not. Um so, I don't like cheating and I don't like playing with people who cheat. Um I generally lose more than I win and I'm pretty happy about it. I enjoy playing the game. It doesn't usually matter to me whether I win or lose uh and I never quit. Maybe when I was a child, I would do that like get angry and quit a game but uh no, as an adult, I have not done that. Uh hey, I do wanna say hi to the 351 people watching. Don't forget to subscribe. There is a button over there and probably one somewhere down below. Um welcome to the channel if you're new here. I'm Bob the Canadian. I teach English here on YouTube. Okay, news New Words with MP has gifted a membership to Sophia. Thank you New Words with MP for doing that. And let me scroll back here because I know there were a few new members that I wanted to welcome. I think that might have happened before I started the lesson though. So, we won't worry about that but welcome if you are a new member. I do really, really appreciate it. From Wanda, hi, teacher Bob. Have you ever been at Montreal Casino at least to have a dinner? Have a nice day. So, I have been to the casino in Niagara Falls and I just walked through it. I didn't actually do any gambling. Um I think I'm too logical to gamble because I know the machine and I know the casino will has a mathematical advantage that I am more likely to lose my money than to win money. So, that's why I don't buy lottery tickets either. Um but yes, I've been to a casino. Not the one in Montreal though. Afiez says, me too to Lolly. I'm bad at card games and board games. They are fun though even if you're bad at them. John Wedge. Hello, Bob. No question today. Just listening and having a good chat with all the friends here. Of course, laughing a lot at Mode Eggs. By the way, I vote for Mode to be the next moderator. So, let me, I considered having longtime members be moderators but there's a small, when you become a moderator, it's less fun. Let me put it this way. When I'm at school, and I'm walking through the hallways to make sure students behave. I can't enjoy the experience as much. 
So, I don't know if I want to make members moderators because they enjoy having a fun time. As soon as you're in charge, it's less fun. So, let me think about it but um I most likely won't do that. Mode says, hey, Mr. Bob, I'm having a lot of fun watching this lesson. I really hope the topic catches on this time. Second time's a charm. The right phrase isn't favorable here. New words from, yeah, I'm sure this will be, there's 335 people. That's pretty good. Pretty good. You know me. It's not the number. It's the lesson. I enjoyed making this one and looking everything up. Um and it was a fun lesson to make because fall is coming and I know we will be playing more games. New words with MP. Hello, sir. How many times have you won Monopoly? I've won my fair share. It's a great English phrase. I'm not gonna say I've won a lot or that I've lost a lot. I've won my fair share. Naomi says, I recently bought Scrabble but so far, I just laid words I'd like to learn. Yes, Scrabble requires that you know words in order to make the words. So, it's a tricky game to play but here's what I do. In my classroom, I have big bags of Scrabble tiles with the letters on them and we sometimes play different games with those tiles. Like I'll ask students to make words using the tiles and whoever makes a word first wins. Like first person to spell out the name of a color and then they win a prize. I might do that next week to start class. Um let's see here. Tarot or tarot. Bob was saying it like this. I don't know. I think I say tarot. I might say it wrong. Omran says, the study pack, very good to memorize the words. Thanks, Bob. It's amazing. Thanks, Omran. That's good to know. I do know that people have sent me very positive feedback about them. Um but I also need to create a system where people can let me know if there's a mistake. I found a mistake in one of them the other day. I fixed it but uh anyways, thanks, Omran, for purchasing one and for giving a shout out about them. Let's see. Lolly's talking to half yes. Let's see. Sophia, new words with MP. Thank you so much. Awesome. Vitor says, lucky at cards, unlucky in love. Is it common to say that? Thanks, Bob. Some people just say unlucky in love or lucky at life, unlucky in love. Yes. Sad if that's how it happens but that's life sometimes. Although Mode Eggs is a joker, I choose him for being a moderator. Key Park says, hi, Bob. Have you ever played Mahjong? Do you like it? I don't like card games because I'm not good at it. The only version I've played is on the computer where the tiles are set and you need to remove them. I've never sat with other people and played the game. So, I would like to do that someday. Hafia says to Lolly, I'm great at being a spectator and giving moral support to people playing card games and board games. (laughs) That's a good one. Freddie Wolf, hey, Bob. Did you ever play dominoes? Sometimes, it's complex when players assemble standing thousands of dominoes to make them fall at the end to reveal fantastic frescoes. Thanks. So, I've done both. I have played dominoes with people in the normal way where you put your tiles on the your dominoes on the table and I've also set them up on end and had them all fall down. Know that says, hey, Bob, if you play with your family, which of your family members wins the most? Thanks in advance. My I'm not gonna say but there is one of my kids who is has a really good brain for card or for card games and board games. I'm not gonna say which one. But there is one who tends to win a bit more than others. Uh Lolly says to Hafiez, you're a great person. Uh Hafiez chatting with Lolly. John Wedge says, 300 people watching. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, folks, because we only have 200 thumbs up so far. There we go. I appreciate all of the thumbs up. Mode says, yes, being a moderator is like keeping score, a responsibility that I don't want. Yeah. So, it's interesting. At work as well, when we have a meeting, Someone has to take notes but no one ever wants to do it because you end up missing what's happening in the meeting and I do feel like if I make someone a moderator, I I feel like it's better to have someone from outside. So, Lolly says to Hafi as I like crosswords. Know that. Bob, do you play the games using the original rules or do you have your own or some for some games? Oh, that's a great question. So, with card games, People sometimes say we're gonna play with like if you're at my house, we play with my house rules because I might have a slight variation on the official rules. With board games, you usually always play with the official rules, okay? But sometimes with card games, there are slight modifications. Uh let's see here. 
Afia is, oh, I love crosswords. I can play that by myself. I think I like solo games more rather than games competing with others. I forgot to mention that in the slides but people will play what's called solitaire which is there's a number of different variations of solitaire. It's when you play a card game by yourself. Uh no that says no problem. Thanks for answering. No problem. Uh with great power comes great responsibility. You're right. Yes. Um Uno for some reason has so many made up rules. That's what Hafiez is saying. Yes. We try to play Uno with the official rules at our house. It's very important. It's because it prevents fights. Um when you start uh using alternate rules, sometimes people get upset and people can start fighting. Okay. So, let's get back to the lesson here. Let me get to the right spot to go back to subscriber chat mode. I do wanna spend just a moment saying thank you to members. By the way, members are people who have clicked the join button. When you're a member, you get your name in green. You get a crown beside your name during live streams. You get an extra video on Wednesdays. It's kind of fun. There's a butterfly in the video last week. Um this past week. Um you get uh, a little English lesson plan on Mondays called Week at a Glance. Um and I have been trying really hard. I don't know if you guys have noticed this to respond to all members comments. I've worked my way back a whole month and I'm up to date every day. So, I've been trying to do that. I started trying to do that in January but now every morning I get up and I respond to members first. So, get a lot of things if you click that join button and I do appreciate it. Uh and you get a discount in the bobthecanadian.com store if you're a member. So, um let's see here. Let's get back to the lesson. Let's do that. Who goes first? Often when you are playing a game, you will ask this question, who goes first? If we go back, you'll realize I have a few questions in here. Whose deal is it? Whose turn is it? Who goes first? So, often a game will have rules about who goes first. Sometimes you roll a dice. Notice I said dice. I should have said die but we just say dice in English most of the time. Uh sometimes it is the person who's the youngest goes first. Sometimes there is a certain like everyone picks a card from the deck and whoever has the highest card, that person goes first. Um generally though with card games, you choose who's going to deal the cards and then the person to the left of the dealer goes first. That's generally how we do it in card games. But yes, another common question, who goes first? We had another question too, didn't we? Who wants to keep score? That was the other one. I didn't have a slide for that one. So, let's talk a little bit about partners. Sometimes you play a game where you are by yourself. You try to win but sometimes you play a game where you have a partner. So, someone who's on the same team as you. I mentioned a game called Euchre. When you play Euchre, the person sitting facing you across from you is your partner and you work together to try and win the game. I enjoy playing games when I have a partner. So, you can see in this picture, partners refers to people who are on the same team. So, those two guys are partners. Also, it depends how the game works. You might sit beside your partner or you might sit across from your partner. So, I changed the slide. I don't know if you saw that. The arrow shows the two people who are sitting close together with no one between them. For this particular game, those people are partners. So, you you would say, oh, do I sit across from my partner or do I sit beside my partner for this game? So, most games, most card games that I know, if you have a partner, you sit across from your partner. Some games where you play, some board games, you might sit with your partner or beside your partner. And you might have more than one partner. That happens sometimes too. And there's something called table talk. And this was referred to earlier. Um table talk is anytime if you have a partner, you say something or do something So, they kind of know what cards you have or what you're going to do in the game. So, let's say Jen and I are playing Euchre and I touch my nose a few times. I might be communicating to Jen that I have I have good cards, okay? Or in this case, this person is saying, oh, I don't feel so good. So, maybe someone shuffled the cards. Someone dealt the cards. 
you got your hand and you have really bad cards, you might say, oh, I don't feel so good. So, you're not saying you have bad cards but you're using what's called table talk to uh let your partner know that you have bad cards. It's considered cheating by the way. Uh and that is the last slide, cheating. So, cheating is when you don't follow the rules. You do things so that you have a better chance of winning the game. So, when you cheat, maybe you put a card up your sleeve. Maybe you stack the deck. Maybe when someone's not looking, you move your game piece. Maybe you roll the dice and then when someone's not looking, you maybe you're like, here, let's, here, I'll, I'll show you how cheating works. Bob doesn't cheat but this is how it would work. So, I roll the dice. I'm like, oh, look, a, a, a cat. And then when you're not looking, I, I flip the dice. So, now I have two sixes which maybe that's good in the game. Anyways, don't cheat. Cheating is, cheating is bad. No cheating allowed. Hey, so that's the end of the formal part of this lesson. As I mentioned, I'm going to teach a few less words and phrases. Still quite a few. Like this was 27, 26 words and phrases. So, that's a lot to learn. Um but I'm not shortening the duration of the lesson. What I'd like to do now is move into um question time. So, questions uh You can ask questions about English. You can ask questions about the lesson. You can ask questions about me. I'll spend the next five to fifteen minutes just answering those questions. It'll be more like how a Saturday live stream works which by the way, there is a live lesson tomorrow. 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You should come. It will be fun. Um so anyways, I'm not ending. I'm going to answer questions and if you have a question, just ask it. Maybe someone can pop. Oh, someone's ahead of me. Someone already popped the form up. Let's see here. I'll do some questions from the chat for a sec to see if people have a bit of time to put questions using the form. Um let me do this too. I'm gonna say it's open question time. Ask questions about anything. Here is the form again and then I know people have done this already but Here we go. So, let me talk a little bit about some other things. Um there is a live lesson tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um I do have a store. I mention it a lot but I am excited about it. It's at bobthecanadian.com. I will make a little thing, a little banner here at some point for people (laughs) to use um and it's been fairly successful. Um people like the study packs. People also like the private message from Bob the Canadian. So, that's where I record a two minute video just for you. Um the people who have purchased it have purchased it for themselves but also for their classes. A few teachers have bought them and asked me to make a greeting for their English students. So, that was a lot of fun. I made a few of those last weekend. That was a blast. So, bobthecanadian.com. There's also a link below if you want to try and get there. Um let's see here. So, I'm not seeing any questions come in. Interesting. No one has questions. Yet, there's still 313 people here. You must have some kind of question. John Wedge says to me, learn English with Bob the Canadian. Let me ask you, why do you always press a button on your camera when chatting with members? (laughs) So, for some reason, the viewfinder on my camera turns off after 30 minutes. So, before I start the lesson, I press a button on my camera to make sure it's awake even though it's not asleep yet and then for 30 minutes, it will stay on and then the screen goes off. The camera still works. Like, you guys can still see me but every 30 minutes, I have to push the button and then the camera stays awake. Lolly says, Bob, connais-tu le jeu de... Oh, I need... J'ai besoin de mes lunettes. The below. Je ne connais pas le mot en anglais. I don't know that game. I should look it up. Maybe I can figure out what it is. Um Hafia says black silhouette behind the door. Yeah, you will see a few people moving back and forth. We're getting ready to go somewhere. Well, I'm not. I've got to go to work later today but we're uh heading out today for something. So, people are getting ready to go. Amran says, Bob is the difference between guide and mentor. Thanks. Oh, So, a guide and mentor. So, a guide can be someone who shows you something but we usually use the word mentor 
Like when new people start at my work, another person will mentor them. So, they'll help them for a year to learn what they need to do. In life, a mentor is usually someone older who gives you advice about different life situations. A guide is more like if you go on a hike, someone will guide you. If you go on a tour of a city, you might have a guide. Um so, it's a little simpler. Mentor is like for serious life things and a guide is for other things as well. Let's see here. I'm gonna do a question from the form. I'll pop back and forth. I wanna try and make sure the questions stay mostly on the form. Naomi says, do you have any good memories of playing board games with your siblings and parents? Yes, my mom really liked to play board games. So, my mom taught most of the games that I still play now, my mom taught me how to play. She taught me how to play Scrabble. She taught me how to play a game called Rummy. That's a card game and all of the other ones. Let's see here. Uh Shia says, hi, Bob. How are you doing? I'm from Sino and hope to get a chance to learn English with you. Awesome. Instead of a game piece, can I say it is a marker? We generally say game piece or token here. Uh let's see here. Xavier, hi, Bob. We met yesterday. I'm sorry I didn't buy anything from you. I was in a rush. Hi, Xavier. I was at market and Xavier rode by on his bike and stopped and said, are you Bob? I said, yeah and we chatted for a bit. So, I hope you have a good year ahead of you, Xavier. It was fun to chat. MJ, in Canada, do you say debit card or check card? We say debit card or bank card when we're paying for things. Mode, I have a question. Did you have any experience with house hippos before? I don't know what house hippos are. (laughs) Is this a funny question or is this an actual term? I gotta look it up now. What is a house hippo? House hippo. A house hippo. I've never heard of it. I will I it's part of a for Canadians a house hippo is such an important part of their childhood. I I have never heard of the house hippo but apparently it was supposed to be an important part of my childhood. (laughs) We'll see. Hafiez, when you check for audio, you check with the earphones. What's going on there? So, I can't have the audio come out of the speakers on my laptop because it will go directly into the microphone and it will start to cause what's called feedback. It creates a feedback loop and that's why you you would hear like this ringing sound. So, I check using these so I can hear quietly what's going on. Uh let's see here. Oh, let me get back to the form. From Niburu, I used to play contract bridge a long time ago. There is a technique called finesse that does it what does it originally mean? I don't know. I haven't played bridge very much. Um it's not a very common game in my part of the world. It's very common I think in Britain and some people in Canada do play it but it's not it's not me uh, or not me. Let's see here. Lolly says I guess means below. It's the equivalent word but I'm not sure it's a card game in English speaking world. Yeah, I don't know. And then Hafia says, is that the same as Hungry Hungry Hippo? No. Hungry Hungry Hippo is a game where you have to like your hippo tries to eat marbles. Um we never had that as a kid. Sophia says, thanks. Um let's see here. So, and Anitra says, hello teacher Bob. I just wanna ask if one day you can make a lesson about connected speech. I enjoy every lesson you make. Yes, at some point I can do that. That would be good. Uh let's see here. From Nancy, hi teacher. What's the difference between scream, yell and shout? Which one do you use to tell a toddler not to scream? So, I think I talked about this last week. When you yell or shout, it can be positive or negative. Like, I can yell like if Jen's far away, I could yell to Jen something like, hey, do you want me to bring you something to eat? Like, sometimes Jen's working and I bring her breakfast. So, that would be positive. If my kids do something bad, I could say, don't do that again. I could yell at them and shout and yell are the same. You can shout or yell positive things or negative things. Scream is one of two things. If you scream at someone, it usually means you're angry. If you're afraid, you might scream because you're afraid like ah and a child might scream as well. Uh let's see here. From Orman. Hello, Bob. Last week, there was chess tournament in Baku, Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan. Very cool. I have not played a lot of chess. Hey, there's a lot of 
stuff happening in the chat which I don't mind but I'm gonna miss some of it. So, please don't be annoyed um if I miss your question in the chat. I'll try to corral the questions into the form next week. Um let's see here. I'm going back and I'm gonna put my glasses on. Um where am I here? When do you usually go live, Bob? I wanna know. That's from Zach. So, I usually go live Friday mornings at 8 30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and once again, I will be live tomorrow at 10 a.m. Open question time. Come and ask any questions you want. Um no that says, Bob, I watched your lesson on security and you mentioned you did a self-defense course. Was it a general course or something special? A long time ago, I did a little bit of karate but I also had some training because I worked somewhere where we had a lot of expensive stuff when I was in university. So, I was learning how to basically protect myself by barricading ourselves in the room or running away. That was the self-defense. Amran says, thanks, Bob. Understood. Freddie says, Bob, quand tu tu t'en es pour aider ton partenaire, comment appelles-tu cela? N'est-ce pas un tu petit peu tricher quand même? It definitely is cheating and it's even though I'm not talking, it's table talk, okay? So, anything you do like if you have these little little signs you do, it's all considered cheating and table talk. Cola says, beef has any special meaning. So, you can have a beef with someone which means you're annoyed with each other or you can eat beef which is a type of meat from cows. Antonio says, hi everyone. Kind regards from Mexico. Um let's see. Let me check the form. Yes. I'm gonna just do questions from the form now. I'm gonna ignore the chat. Oh, Wanda has one though. I'll get to that. Jed says, hi, Bob. Thanks for your lessons. Wonder if you could recommend some easy to read news websites or platforms for beginners. So, if you go to um let me get this in the chat here. Um HTTP simple.wiki.org. I think that's it. So, if you go to uh it should show up in the chat right now. Um simple Wikipedia, I really like. So, it's a form of Wikipedia where everything has been written in very clear and direct English. So, I would definitely go there. Uh let's see. I think I missed a question here from Wanda. It might have disappeared actually. Sorry about that. Mode says, every account is only allowed one question. You need to log in with a different account if you wanna ask more than one question. Yeah. And that's just for flood protection, it's called. Like, we don't want too many people. Like, I don't want someone to ask a hundred questions. That would, that would be, we need to take turns. There. Bring, I'll bring it right back to the lesson. Even when we do questions in a live stream, we need to take turns. Everyone gets one turn to ask their question and then their turn is over. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Marcus says, I'm watching athletics and ice hockey. Canada is good at athletics and hockey. We definitely are pretty good at hockey. I would agree. Um and from mate, how do you know some good game to practice English speaking? Thank you, you speaking. I don't really. Like, I know the games I play in my classroom. And I haven't figured out how to play those games online but let me think about that because I wonder if there's a way to do a live stream someday where everyone is playing a game and learning English. That would be fun to explore. So, maybe I'll try and do that. Um new words with MP says, where can I find the online lecture? If you're talking about this um So, this is available right here. There's a link in the description below. All of the slides and everything that you would need. Um and we're gonna wrap this up, Rexter, in three minutes. Mode says, hey, Mr. Bob, that's a good strategy. I was explaining that to Freddie. Yes, I like good strategies. (laughs) You should always be prepared for everything. So, anyways, let me wrap this up right now. If you watched this past week's lesson on phrasal verbs, you'll know what I mean. To wrap something up means to end it. So, I would like to end it by saying this. This lesson will come out in a shorter version in a couple days. I will remove all of the user questions and it will be a pure lesson on games. It's a good idea to rewatch it or listen to it one more time. Repetition is very important when learning a language. It can be a bit boring 
but maybe just listen to this while you're driving or making dish making dishes making supper or doing dishes or walking. Um, it'll just help you remember all the words. Once again, there is a study pack link in the description below. Go check that out. There is a live stream tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, a little later than right now, okay? So, in about 24 and a half hours, there's another live stream. I will be doing it outside if the weather's nice. The weather looks good um and it should be lots and lots of fun. Um what else was I going to mention? I think that's it. I appreciate that all of you have been watching my lessons. The YouTube channel has been doing quite well this month. I think mostly because we kicked it off with that fun food tasting lesson with Brent um and then I did a couple of pretty good videos. This week Tuesday, the video is me at the gym. My hair will be a bit longer than now because I recorded it a couple days ago. So, if you're suddenly wondering why my hair is longer in the video on Tuesday, that's why. But I went to the gym and I did a little lesson on working out and fitness English lesson. So, not not a lesson. <laughs> I'm not starting an exercise channel. That's not what it is. Um anyways, thanks for watching everybody. Uh, have a great day. Um I do plan eventually to have an outro. I don't have one yet. So, it'll just be me sipping water and uh I'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for another uh live stream. Should be fun. Bye. Oh, I didn't say bye to people. Bye Vitor, Freddie, Sophia, uh know that, Mode Eggs, Cola Lover, John Wedge, Lolly Lolly, uh Eugene from Etobicoke, Freddie Wolf, Caitlin, Sophia, uh Key Park, Arena. Oh, hi Arena. Good to see you. John Wedge, Denny, Ka, Clive is here. Hi, Clive. Hafiez, Wanda, and everybody else. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for learning a little bit of English. Bye to Jed, um Naomi. I'm starting to repeat myself. So, bye. Have a great day everybody. Uh, enjoy yourself. I know I will. I have a pretty fun day plan. I'm not telling you what it is. It's private. Bob's having a nice well, I do have to, I do have to go to work but other than that, uh, we should be doing some fun stuff today. Bye. <laughs>